All right, let's go with question number six to seven. And this has been brought from the topic laws of motion and friction is also involved at this question. It says two masses m1 equals to five kz. So let me write it here. This guy is five kz. M2 is 10 kz. This one is 10 kz. And it says connected by an inextensible string over a frictionless pulley. The pulley is smooth. So that simplifies our solution are moving as shown in the figure. The coefficient of friction of horizontal surface is 0.15. So this is the value of mu which is equal to 0.15. And the question says the minimum weight m that should be put on top of m2 so that the motion would stop. In other words, we need to calculate the minimum value of m. Well, the overall state of motion is that the system is at rest. So in this situation, legitimately, we can take M and M2 as one system. So that will simplify the solution to a very great extent. So the system of particle and the situation where it is at rest, now I can easily write T would be equals to 5G from the free body diagram right here. This is T and this is 5G. Now here, we need to consider the case the minimum weight. In other words, the system is at the verge of motion. Though it is at rest, but it is at the verge of motion. In other words, the friction which is acting here is limiting friction. So here, taking M and M to both as the system, the value of tension is going to be mu, which is 0 0.15 times the normal reaction. Well, the normal reaction is going to be M plus M2. So that will be M plus of 10G. So that will be the value of tension. Now, these are the two equations. A straightforward solution is going to give us the value of M as 23.3 kz. Well, believe on me, I had calculated it. But now, you do not find 23.3 kz in the option. But if you read the question properly, at least you can come and figure out into a right option. If you see, if you just bank on the word minimum, the minimum weight. So if this is the answer, to certify a correct option, the minimum value out of these four options is going to be 27.3 kz. So right here, for this particular question, the correct option comes out to be option number one. So that was question number six to seven. Let's move to question number 68. Right then, let's move to question number 68. A very straightforward question. A particle is moving in a circular path of radius A under the action of an attractive potential energy. U is minus of K by 2 R square. And on the basis of this value, we need to compute the total energy. Let's see. The first thing is that, say, if I have the potential energy as this, I can write the expression of force as F equals to minus of du by dr. By the way, when I write this expression and I say that this is the total force, I mean to say the force does not have the theta component. In other words, the field is radially symmetric. Now, putting the value of u right here and getting it differentiated, let's try to see that straightforward becomes equals to, you know, d by dr and let's put the value of u that's minus of k upon 2r square and this minus is there again so we can say the minus and minus would get cancelled and the further derivative is going to give me minus of k upon r q all right now the negative direction of force indicates the force is in the negative r direction indicating attractive force indicating the force is directed towards center, which means the very force will be acting as the centripetal force. So now let's try to see, equating it with mv square by r is equal to minus of k by r cube. And of course, the minus sign indicates that the direction is towards the center. So you can simply go with the magnitude part what I will be getting is from this particular data, the kinetic energy, which is one half m 
v square and that is going to be k by 2r square. Well, now the solution goes very, very straightforward. This is the kinetic energy and the potential energy is already there. So mechanical energy or the total energy what has been asked in the question is the sum of kinetic and potential energy and that value is going to be zero. So therefore, with this given answer, the correct option for question number 68 is going to be option number two. The total mechanical energy is zero. What's well, straightforward, but in fact is a conceptual one. Let's go to the next question, question number 69.